Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm down here in my craft room because I'm wanting to sift through my dies. I have been looking around at YouTube videos on ways to kind of make my junk journals more interesting as far as pockets and little tucks and things like that are concerned. And I came across a video from 49 dragonflies. It was actually from three years ago and I'll, I'll link to it. Um, she had a really cute video about uh, making a really like fun journal ephemera out of little file folders and, and um, like die cuts, but kind of putting them together, die cuts and tags, putting them together to make little flips and things to add to your journals. And um, she was mentioning, you know, you might have um, some of these things on hand already, like some die cuts and things that you could use in your journals. And that got me thinking, I have a lot of dies. Like right here, we're looking at all of my metal dies that I have. And these are, um, you know, the, the basic standalone dies. Uh, these aren't I, I do have dies that have to do with, that go with my stamps, but these are kind of like the standalone dies. So like the frames and the um, cutout circles and that kind of thing. And I thought, what a great idea. Why don't I go dig a little deeper and see what I have in my dies that I could use for journaling, like making pockets, making, just doing something a little bit more inter interesting than just having like a straight edge pocket or, or maybe just a scallop or something like that. I, I have so many dies here and I've been talking a lot about kind of using what I have and um, making things on a smaller scale as well in my craft room, like, uh, you know, making smaller little cluster embellishments and things to kind of get my creativity flowing. And I think these can be a part of that as far as, you know, making little separate uh, pockets and envelopes and things that I can add to my journals later on. Maybe I don't have a journal in mind, but just the act of doing it just can be a lot of fun and create and use, use my creativity and um, it just can kind of get ideas flowing. But, you know, I really want to use what I have. And I think um, going through my dies and kind of figuring out um, how I can use them in a different way would be beneficial. So this was a basket I put together a while ago. I called it my tag making cabinet or whatever. I haven't, I haven't stored in a cabinet. I'll, I'll um, link the video. Um, I made this a couple years ago, but I wanted to put together all of my um, tag making supplies so that I had them in one spot because I like to make tags for gifts and, and gift bags and things like that. And I included with those, um, you know, sentiments that would go on tags, tag shapes and that kind of thing. And then in the back, I, I had different kind of um, dies that were used to make uh, like little money, uh, money holders, card holders, um, gift card holders, that kind of thing. Um, and then I also have, uh, these are like, this is like a seed packet. So these are very obvious dies that you could use as a uh, pocket in a journal or some kind of little envelope. You know, uh, this is, I don't know what this is. Oh, scalp sleeve pocket. Um, this is actually a mini book that you use to create a small journal from. So these would definitely be things I would use. So these are, I, I kind of have these all in one spot so I can, I can grab them. Um, as I think of ideas. Um, so I'm definitely going to use the dies in here. And then another thing I kind of have set up too, let me show you over here. If you like to do stamping in your in your journals and also to have journal spots, I have this basket right here that has all of my stamps that have to do with journaling. So they are stamps that aren't used in card making. I mean, you could use them in card making, but these are more for things that you'd put in a journal. So, you know, like today's story, these are a lot of Allie Edwards stamps. Um, what else here? You know, stamps that say things like, you know, here and now, fun, you know, the stuff that you put in a journal. And then I also have a lot of these uh, stamp sets that have journal spots on them. And I think these are great to add to journal pages too, or, little uh, embellishments that you add to journals, you can add a journal spot right on it and then um, just use that as a journaling card or something. So I keep all these stamps together so that I can easily kind of see what I have. So, so this has been really helpful. And then having this 
basket here is also helpful because I know, okay, this is, I can definitely grab for these things for my journals. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take my baskets of dies out. I'm just gonna go through them and we can kind of talk about them together and, and figure out what are some ways I could use these dies in journals. So let's go ahead and... So this is my first basket of dies. This is my frames dies. So frames would be anything that is flat, like a square, uh, maybe a, a flat background, uh, squares, rectangles, um, anything that, or, or something that's open in the middle, that would actually be a frame. Uh, anything that would frame a sentiment also. So that's what I kind of considered frame dies. These are standalone dies. And so I, I kind of went through these ahead of time because I had so many of them. I had a lot of, I have a lot of just regular rectangles and things like that that I know that I, I have and I'm not going to forget about. So if I do need a rectangle for something, I can just use a rec plain rectangle for uh, a pocket or something like that. What I'm kind of looking for is kind of the unique dies that I've maybe have forgotten about. So I pulled those out ahead of time just to save time and then to kind of show you what I found in this basket. And I've got this separate basket here that I'm going to keep these in so that I don't forget about them and I can start creating little little pieces that I could add to journals later on. So just another another way to kind of keep keep a supply running of ephemera and things that I can use to kind of make an interesting, interesting journal. Another thing I was thinking about with making little pockets and things ahead of time is, you know, whatever is, looks interesting to me as far as the, the paper I'm using and that kind of thing, that might inspire the journal that I make from it. So it might just, the journal might be starting to make itself from the ephemera pieces that I'm making. So I don't know. I just thought that was uh, another way to kind of get your creativity flowing a little bit is, um, you know, if you're having a hard time thinking of a type of journal to make, just start making stuff to put in it and then maybe the journal will kind of come to you. So these are the things that I found in my frames basket. I had forgotten about these. This is a fun story because I, in fact, I don't even remember, these are from Spellbinders. They're, I don't even know what they're called. They're kind of a scroll type frame. So you would put the, the, uh, sentiment in the middle and then you have this pretty scroll around it when I first started card making I loved anything that I actually loved a lot of shabby chic things back then and it's kind of come back around again and now it's more popular and, and I'm actually starting to like it again too uh, but I would buy a lot of kind of scrolled dies and things that would look really pretty when you cut them out and I found these were probably one of the first dies I bought to make cards because I thought I needed, you know, I need a frame to put on my sentiment on top of and to put it right on the front of the card. And that and that'll be that on the card. <laughs> so I got this set of three little, I guess, sentiment frames is what you would call them. But they're really pretty. And I think these would be so pretty for a journal just maybe a title. I don't know. You could just use it for, for anything. So I think, or, or also even uh, cluster embellishments, because you have this really pretty scroll on the side here uh, to, to use like that. But this is solid on the inside. So this would actually make a fun pocket too. So this doesn't cut out, the, the hole doesn't cut out. It's just a, a solid piece in the middle. So I think I would use this as a pocket and put some foam tape on either side and then on the bottom and then you have the pretty scroll and then you could tuck ephemera in like that so that would be pretty or also a cluster embellishments so make make pretty like a little, little collage on top of it and then you have the pretty scroll on the side so any one of these things and I think these are meant to stack too so you could stack this on top of here so that would be really pretty too as a pocket so definitely gonna try that like I said I was kind of trying to find the more unique pieces that I forget about in my die cutting basket. So I'm going to set that aside. I found these from Little Inker Designs. They're just stitched strips. So again, for something that you could use on cards with sentiments on top or kind of to decorate as a background. But I really like the way they're different sizes, different widths, and then there's the stitching on it, which a lot of times in journals you can use some sort of a band to tuck things in on the side you, you you line this up at the edge of a page and then you can do some tucking of ephemera or journaling or something like that but I thought this detail of the the stitching would be really pretty maybe to, to trim this out on some pretty paper or I'm trying to think of what other 
I mean, I don't even know if it would cut through fabric or not. I don't think it would. Uh, maybe some uh, chipboard, something like that. So I'm definitely going to try these just to make some maybe some pretty decorative bands. I've seen people also do collaging on strips and then use that as a as a band on the side of a journal page too. So definitely some things to keep in mind. Sorry, that was my dehumidifier I had to turn off because I'm in a basement, so I always have to have something like that to keep my paper from getting all wrinkled. Then I found these dies from Frantic Stamper, and these are kind of fun. They have, you, you cut them out, the, the center is open, and then the sides have these really pretty stripes on them that I thought would be fun to kind of tuck some ephemera in and use that just to decorate a page. So these are curvy ones, these are straight ones, and these kind of give a wider, have a wider um, opening. And just kind of an open frame there. So I thought those would be kind of fun to make a, I'm trying, you can't, let's see, I don't think, no, you can't make a pocket with it because it's open in the middle, but like the little sides would be a pocket, but you could do a, maybe even a shaker too. That would be, that would be fun, shaker on a page. Oh, and this is another set. I don't know where these were from. Oh, these are from my favorite things, vertical stri stitched stripes. Again, these are just thicker. So I'm thinking actually these thicker pieces, this one's really thick. This would be nice for a collage on top and then use it as a band too. So I've got different options with that. This is another one of those diagonal opening dies. Uh, I was thinking I would use this, but I don't know. This is kind of the same as the other ones. I At the time, I really liked these, so I had I, bought, I purchased a couple of them. Um, so I might just set this back in the basket for a while and just use what I have because I don't want to overwhelm myself with too many options because then, again, then you're overwhelmed by too many things to make. So uh, I'm just going to put this back for now, and then I can always go back to it. So that is my frames basket. Let's go on to the other basket. So this basket is more of kind of a mishmash of, of different types of themes. So I have celebrations, clothing and textiles. So that would be very specific dyes, like a dress shaped dye or a shoe shaped dye, uh, flowers. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, oh, food, home. Home would be like I actually have a die that's shaped like a television set. <laughs> uh, nature, which would be you know suns and clouds and that kind of thing, and then borders. So I went through this already, and let me show you what I pulled out of here. And it's kind of funny. I haven't there, a lot of the dies I haven't used in a while, and so I'm kind of re remembering what I have too. So this it's kind of helpful always to kind of if you get some new ideas and how to, if you're trying to get new ideas on how to use your dies, flip through them again so that you know what you have. So I ended up, I forgot about this die. This was a die that I got from Neat and Tangled quite a while ago. It's a box die. And what it does is, this is for, kind of for, you know, maybe a birthday card or something. And you die cut the box and it's an actual, it sticks to the card, but it's kind of open so you can tuck little things in there. So I thought, how fun would this be to do something with this for a journal. Again, have something fun to, to pop out or to, to tuck in, you know, just something a little bit different that would be unexpected. So that came out of the birthday section. All kinds of borders are great when you don't want to just have, you know, a plain straight border. So I found this one. This is a Spellbinders, really pretty kind of lacy look. And I thought you could also use, you know, if you have border punches, but I... Uh, was using this for cards, kind of like a little border on a card. But even the front of this kind of shows how pretty that looks when you add this border to a greeting card. You could do the same thing to a journal page, too, or line the top of a pocket with it, and that would look really pretty, too. So definitely keep that in mind. And then some of these other borders are just interesting shapes. So to take a, square, a, a plain straight pocket and just add, cut a border piece into it and then you can get some interesting shapes so they're kind of um, angled but then they have some stitching so it's just again something a little bit different these are some scalloped borders zigzags and kind of curvy type things 
So these can be kind of used for anything on the front of cards, but I thought how fun for pockets or tuck spots on the sides of pages. And then I had a little section of stitching dies. So dies that you add embroidery stitching to. And I found these heart shapes. This is from an old paper tray ink set. And these were pretty because you can use them in a couple of different ways. There's a few different dies in this set and one is a stitched frame. So you punch it out and then you can stitch along the side. And this would be really pretty just to kind of add to the corner of a page as a decoration. You could also, you know, kind of stack them together and make a embellishment with it. This you would die cut right into a page and then you can stitch right on the page in the shape of a heart. So just kind of something a little bit different. So I was thinking I'll leave that out as a reminder to maybe kind of add that to something. Then I found this basket die and I don't know what, I think I keep this in uh, ho my home section because I didn't know where else to put it. But this is a really cute die from, this is Impression Obsession. And it's just a basic kind of woven basket. But when you die cut it, it has a little slot in it and you can tuck some things in there too. So I just like the texture of this and just the, it's just kind of cute, like a little basket and you can cut it out in different colored paper or pattern paper and then just use that as kind of an embellishment holder or journal card holder. And then I had these in my home section, doors and windows. <laughs> there was a time where I think it was really popular to kind of add doors and things to, to your cards. So you open it up and you have the greeting. And I think I've used these a couple of times. These are, where are these from? Poppy stamps. I can, I mean, these are from 2012. I can link what I can. A lot of my dies are pretty old. I, I don't buy a ton of them anymore just because I have so many. I actually need to go through and maybe do some stashing of things. But this is really cute. It's a door with a little frame on it. Or actually, I think it goes, yeah, it goes this way. And I believe, yes, it does open. It has a little hinge here. So obviously, you could use that as a fun little journaling spot. Uh, or have a picture behind it or something. So I don't know. I just thought that would be kind of interesting to use. And same thing with the window. This is open, but you can, it has hinges on either side and you can open the windows and just have something cute behind it or just some, maybe some pretty pattern paper. Uh, I know I have some pattern paper that has dishes on it. So I'm thinking that might be cute. Make it like a little buffet or something for uh, kind of a home themed journal. So I'm going to keep that out so that I, I can remind myself to use these things when I'm making journals. So that was everything in that basket. So I've got one so more. This bas last basket is shapes. So circles, uh, stars, hearts, those kinds of things. And then I also have banners and flags. So the little just basic, uh, you know, fishtail banners and those kind of things, sentiment strips, and then cover plates, which are kind of backgrounds that can be cut out and, and sit on a card all by itself. So I went through those. I actually found a couple of things that I forgot I had, so um, that was nice. But I ended up finding, uh, I oh, and I also have some kind of some doily shaped dies, and I usually just use regular paper doilies because it's a lot easier <laughs> to, to cut out, but sometimes those are fun to have. But I did find in the kind of flourish doily section, I found these little corners. These are from my favorite things from quite a while ago, and these would be really pretty for the corners of any type of embellishment or a page, and I had forgotten I had these, so I'm glad I went through them. And th these are very old school. These are old Sizzix dies. These are the thicker ones, and they make these little corners too. So I have these that I can try using. And then I found this. This is a background uh, cover plate, and it's kind of got a retro design. This is from Paper Tray Ink, but it's kind of the same idea. I could use the little slots for tucking things in, but I also like the look of it. Since I make a lot of retro style journals, um, these would be kind of fun to use as a, they, and they could even be a pocket too. Um, you'd have like an open pocket. It would be kind of open, but you could tuck something in. I know you could do a lot of things with it or tuck, you know, like little things in there. But I thought that was kind of fun. This cover plate, this is a kind of a lattice cover plate. So it gives you that kind of gardeny lattice wood fence look. 
I just thought this would be fun as kind of texture on a page, or you could use it as an open pocket too with kind of open squares. But just the, the, the look of it and the texture, it has kind of a floral look. You could decorate the front with flowers to kind of cover up the holes or cover up some of the holes and use it as a pocket or just kind of lay it on top of a page um, just for a little bit more interest. I also found these huge uh, fishtail uh, banner dies and they're very wide so I just thought again those would be fun for uh, embellishments or, or journaling with the stitching and everything I thought that add, added some interest these are very old too I my, my favorite things I don't know that they they used to make a ton of layered dies so they had or stacking dies and I they were really handy because I, I have a lot of their stitched squares and rectangles and things. And they had a lot of different shapes too with the, the stacking. So you get five or six in a, in a set. And I don't know if they have as many anymore. I know they had the, the basic tags and that, and um, those are really nice too. So I can see what, what they have over there and link anything, but um, these are nice because they're just, they're, they're bigger. They're not your normal size. So I think again, pockets would be really nice, just a different shape and then with the stitching or just a, a kind of a journal tag. This I found, this was, this is called the Fanfare Scalped Border Dyed from Little Inker Stamps. And I just like the way this looks. I thought it would be pretty. It's got the, the kind of the open areas in it when you die cut it. But I thought it might be pretty to just kind of decorate the top of a, a pocket or use as a, kind of a border on a page just again something just a little bit more interesting this is another one of the the uh, my favorite things stackable dies they're half circles I think that's what they're called art arches stitched arches and I thought these would be fun for a different type of pocket kind of rounded on the bottom you could do the same thing with a circle and just cut off the end of it. But I just happen to have these and it make, you know, if I have them, I might as well use them and it makes it easy. And then you get the stitching too, which I thought was nice and just kind of just something a little bit different. Tuck spot, you could put it on the side of a page and use it as a tuck spot where you kind of, you know, secure some of the sides. Um, I don't know, just something shaped a little bit different that I thought would be fun for, for the journal. I found this circle that's got the little openings in it again more tucking so um, I thought this might be kind of fun to try have the, the square shape but then the circle might be interesting too this is supposed to be kind of a retro looking uh, piece that you use on a card with the kind of that 70s look so again goes goes with my retro style and then hexagons which I really like these are just some stackable hexagons that you can pretty much find anywhere I had the idea that I could use this as kind of an interesting, and you could do this with any shape if you have, you know, even with hearts or uh, just regular circles or anything, but I just, I like the shape of the hexagons. I was thinking kind of a double pocket. So you have, so you secure this bigger one on the bottom, on the sides, you know, to kind of seal it in and then have the opening as a pocket and then have this one kind of stacked on top and it's kind of sealed here on top of this one and then um, maybe some foam tape or something here and then you have kind of like a layered look and then you can put things in the pockets there these are smaller so I probably use the, the bigger sized uh, from the stack but I don't know I just something that's shaped differently just gives you just a different look rather than just the plain old circles and squares so that's why I was thinking of just you know adding kind of the border strips and the um, different shapes I just that would be a little more interesting. So that's kind of, I think I found a few things to get started with. Like I said, I didn't want to overwhelm myself, but I just love that idea of, again, being able to use what you have and try to kind of add some more interest to journals that way. Uh, I'll put a link to the, the video that kind of inspired me. And uh, hopefully maybe you have some of these same dyes in your collection and you can try some of these things as well. And I will, as I, as I create things, I'll share them on video and, and kind of show you what I came up with too. So you can, so you can see how I've been using things. So that is it for the video today. I just thought I'd bring you along with me as I kind of put some ideas together and I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you in my next video.